I was going to do it in a sort of logical order, but whilst yeah. we're here, I might just actually um, treat the, the sections as we go along instead. So in this section, I was really trying to get the vocals to punch through, mm -hmm. you know, in the mix and really sort of cut. Um, you can you can do this with uh, compression, obviously, if you if you kind of compress it quite hard and um, take the tack time up a bit, so the, just the, the fronts really punch through. But um, whilst I was experimenting around um, on Talisa's vocal, uh, to you trying to get it as, as as cutting as possible. So I'll, I'll show you a bit about my chain as well, actually, sure. whilst I'm going through it. So. Is this a typical? Is this a typical vocal chain? This is a fairly well, a fairly typical. But I, I'm not one of these people that use, have a lot of set things that I use yeah, on set because I just find it a quite uninteresting and b everything is always different yeah, and and I quite like the the challenge of you know treating everything you know with with respect to what it is rather than just going oh well yeah I've got this setting and that's just that that's fine because it's. I don't know, I just don't think it's the right way of working. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, in terms of the plugins I use, this is quite typical. Um, uh, I, I nearly always use the Oxford EQ on vocals just because I love, as I said earlier, I love what it does with the top end. I'm using it, um, I'm using it on a few bits here. So, the vocal before. Give it for what I've done. So, it's already treated, it doesn't sound too bad. Um, Do you want me to turn the sound down or is that okay? Because I'm young, yeah, I'm young. So the first thing I do is I, I, I start by EQing it. You could compress it first if you don't necessarily want to compress, if you've pushed some top end and you don't want to bring that out. But, you know, I don't think there's any set rules with how your plug-in chain is or how you work. It's just whatever yeah, sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, you could debate it till the cows come home. Yeah. It's just whatever works. And I sometimes move the order around and, and it gives you a different effect, but sometimes it's great. So, yeah, um, yeah don't get too con conscious about that. Just just go with what's right. So, as you can see on my, my screen, I've got a kind of a, I've got a push at the top end. I've got a, a kind of a little bit of a, sort of a, a frequency that was a bit harsh coming through at a, just under 3,000, um, 3K, and uh, I'm putting a bit more body back into the vocal and mm. cutting out any very low stuff because it's just not necessary. So. Give it for what I have done Cause I'm young, yeah I'm young Done Okay, and then Done Cause I'm young yeah, I'm young. So what I've done is I've, I've put quite a lot more body into it. I've taken that out. Uh, this will make more sense once I put everything else on because yeah. it sounds like it's going a bit flat, but actually once I've got everything else that's going across it, that particular part of the vocal was being pushed so hard that it needed to be, to be ducked there. Um, I've also got the suppressor pulling out a frequency around, young. almost around the same yeah, area as that, the duck I had on that EQ. Um, the dynamics is uh, a compression, Done. so I'm just I'm, I'm pushing the com you know I'm pushing the, the vocal into the compressor to make it a bit more punchy. Yeah. Um, then this is the really interesting part actually, which is the, uh, the 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 trans mod, which is pushing up the attack on the front of the vocal, and it, it's just helping it cut through. So. Done. Cause I'm young. Yeah, I'm the next young. Part. So. Young, forgive me for what I have done. So if I put that on now, forgive me for what I have done. You kind of hear all the the sort of parts starting to spit through. Um, oh, it's just fun. It's just fun. I told me to frighten you up. It's so and then before. It's just fun. I told me to frighten. It's subtle, but it all makes a difference. And and then uh, I've got a kind of a, I've got a PSP on the end, which I quite like, sort of just adding more oomph into the vocal. You can 
hear them really going and all the all that stuff coming through and it just yeah helps helps with the clarity so yeah that's that was the vocal chain that I ended up using on this um, and I think it cuts through pretty well um, moving on um, actually this section uh, let's go to the, the chorus section because there's quite a lot going on here so the chorus <laughs> So the kick's pretty heavy, just coming through on this. On the kick, I've got an EQ. Again, I'm taking out some of the real low, low, low frequencies. It sort of helps focus the, the punch area. Sure. Um, as before. And you can hear that, that that it kind of then you can hear the sort of 50, 60 start taking just effect. With, it, yeah. yeah, just controls it. And then I'm doing a tiny kind of push at 147 um, to really make the nose, you know, on, on the punch on the kick come through. Very bright, but that's the sample. Yeah. yeah. So it's turned down quite a lot simply because, again, once it's going into everything else, that would be. So it's controlling it. And then I've got the um, trans mod, uh, again, pushing the attack up on the kick. Nice. So you can hear that just the kind of clicky front yeah. just helps come through, which is really important. And then uh, moving on, I had a little, um, there's a very, Got a few snares that have got similar sort of process. This has got it's got the ox it's got the trans mod on this again because yeah, yeah. um, that that clap was getting totally lost in the in 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 the in the mix. It doesn't have to be loud, but it just needs to be heard. <laughs> Subtle. I mean, I, I, I tend to be quite subtle with everything that I do because as an overall picture, if you go, you know, this is what you get from generally inexperienced is, is you go too heavy on things because it sounds great. And then when everything's together as a, as a, as a group, it's just, it's way, it's way over the top. Um, moving on to the bass, uh, I've got a few different basses going on on this, which I try not to do. I usually try and have one and keep a focus, but there's a whole bunch of layers going on. But the real sub, um, I have just used the Oxford Dynamics, which is really a great, uh, it's one of those plugins that you could, you could have on startup on pretty much every single channel, especially if you're in 64-bit mode, yeah. which I, I, I work in now because the, the freedom it gives you with you know, being able to use countless plugins is great. But um, the Dynamics is a really handy, just quick go-to for sort of fixing compression, a little bit of EQing, you know, not if you're going into in-depth because then you just bring up the, 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 the Sonox EQ itself. Um, but in this instance, I'm using it uh, a bit of EQ to uh, boost the low frequencies. Uh, if I go to that, yeah, you can see that I'm boosting about plus two, at about yeah. 86. Um, and then I'm using the compressor as a, as a ducking device, as a side chainer, so to make it pump and leave room for the kick. I mean, with all these club records, it's so important that the kick has a lot of space around it. So you pretty much either have to low cut most of the parts or do this, you know, do some sort of sort of um, side chaining to the kick. Um, so before. And then that works in conjunction with uh, You were almost sound designing with it really. Yes. I, I originally yeah, yeah, that exactly. Was a sample. I thought that was the, you know, the sound. No, yeah, yeah, no, you use it exactly. A regular sub, yeah. Exactly. Um, on these whole pile of group synths here. <laughs> Um, they're all going to a bus, which I have ozone across. I've got um, 
a Vengeance House uh, plugin that's also a, a different style of sidechainer. Then I've got um, the Oxford. I've got, again, I'm using this to brighten it. Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm brightening up slightly, lifting the very top um, a little bit um, in the sort of mid section. And then again, I'm using this as the pump. Mm -hmm. So um, it's. I wanted it to be more. Yeah. It's a really nice. It, it, it pumps really nicely with that that plugin, um, and on the end of it, I have got the limiter, which is just one of my favourite plugins ever, and it just does so many, so so much, you know, so so much to so many things. Um, and I'm using this. I'm using the magic enhance button, which no one quite knows what it does, but it does a great job. Maybe you can you explain like to me afterwards. Oh, it's a secret. <laughs> um, but you like it. I love it. Yes, and uh, that's just pushing it out a bit. And that's just for. So yeah, you can just hear the difference yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. Is there a limiter on the on the master as well? Yeah, I'll get to that. I'm sorry, you're jumping the gun. Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then the only other thing that I thought was interesting was this sound here. That's the original sound, so doesn't sound that great. There's a lot of hiss. And this is when you gave me funny looks earlier because I'm using the, the Oxford suppressor for probably all the wrong reasons, but it, 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 it did a really good job. Wow. So that's where I've ended up. And I've used the outside button and it's sort of isolated the, the frequencies that I do want. That white noise is from here. Yeah. And then I've got the, the limiter just then kind of compensating, brightening it up slightly. Um, That's really interesting. So just just to just to recap on that, you're not using it. You're not doing it. The listen mode isn't in the mix. No um, switch. No. You're you're listening to the outside. Yes, which is probably not the right thing to do, but it it works. Oh, yeah. But it's not. I mean, the usual the usual use for it obviously is a, is as a DS or controlling the bass. But. You know, I play around with plugins, and if I suddenly click on something and I go, oh, that's right, then that's right, job's done. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. And then going to the master, going because then what happens is the whole mix is going around my um, analog gear, then back into my desk. And on the master, I have got the limiter running. Give it for what I have done. You can hear when I, when I put it on, suddenly the the kick sort of gets a real really nice punch to it, and I, I love the enhance button subtly. I've seen people use it right up on 100% on mixes, but I kind of tend to use it a bit more subtly. I've, take, I've taken the attack up, so it's not affecting the you know the the, the transients too much, and um, yeah, it's doing a great job just sort of pushing it into into my multiband compressor that I've got kind of running afterwards. Beautiful. That's that about it. Good. Thank you very much. It's interesting to see, you know, different uses out of the plugin. So yeah, very cool. <coughs> well, thank you. Thank you for coming down.